Okay, let's kick it off. Looks like we still have a few people coming in to the conference bridge here, but gave everyone a couple minutes. We're gonna get started with taking through a rundown of customer journeys. So my name's Mark Seltzer. I'm an account executive here at Journey at Churn Zero. Thanks for joining in today. Uh, have a chance to talk to many different customer success industry leaders day in and day out. And people generally come in and start engaging with us for churn reasons, right? They have a churn issue, they wanna mitigate that there. But a key theme that consistently gets brought up is being able to define processes. So for today's call, we plan to cover what are journeys? How are you managing your journeys internally? What do journeys mean to you? How to create a successful journey? As well as what we can, we can take out as far as data. data. What do journeys actually tell us here? So what is a journey? Simply put, it's taking a customer from point A to point B, right? To take that a step further, we need to make sure that we're taking the customer from point A to point B in a manner that's effective for the customer and efficient for your customer success team. It would be nice to spend unlimited time with each client, but that's unrealistic. So we need to find a good balance here. Beyond that, we need to make sure that this process is repeatable for different segments of your client base. Part of what makes a place like Chipotle or McDonald's so successful is that you know what you get every time you walk into one of their restaurants, whether you're in DC, Miami, LA, you're gonna have a repeatable process and a defined outcome through experience and, and taste. We need your customers to feel the same way about your journey a consistent level of service. So to further define the journey, it's a map of a process that your customer completes to achieve key goals throughout their customer life cycle. Journeys outline clear expectations of what is needed from both your internal team and your customers. Within each journey, you can define milestones, tasks, and achievements to guide your customers through a process with ease and efficiency. So an example of a customer journey within their life cycle could be expansion, onboarding, obviously, renewals, advocacy. The key is to always know the status of your customer's journey, whether they're on track, behind or stuck for a contact, an account, or an entire portfolio of business. If a customer begins to lag, quickly isolate the cause and correct it using real-time journey insights. That collaborative approach is gonna make the entire life cycle much more seamless. So as we kick off for one of our first polls here, would like to uh, query the crowd and see if you have a defined customer journey for the entire customer life cycle. You could do the yes or no, it'd be great. This will also help your customer success team and show where they and your product teams intersect. How, how well do they work together? So we'll just give it another uh, 20 seconds or so. Make sure we get these polls coming in. It looks like a good amount of voted. Don't forget to vote. So from the field, we're showing about 60% actually don't have a defined customer life cycle. And that's quite frankly what I expected. It makes sense if the life cycle is not clearly defined. What I mean by that is we usually see in the potential customers we work with an implementation team perhaps after a sales handoff maybe. It's pretty well defined for that kickoff call, the training, maybe a first quarterly business review. But after that, we, we consistently see a, a drop off as far as structure and engagement leading up to the renewal. So you're not only having a journey for things like onboarding, but you have to make sure that the map of key milestones might be laid out in a high touch success plan for a client or even more of an automated success plan for the client. So thanks everyone for, for voting there. So what do journeys actually mean to you? It, it could be different for each set of clients. Uh, does it accelerate the time to value for your customers? 
do you define processes through journeys? Are they repeatable experiences for your clients? Can you use them to actually internally rapidly onboard new team members? Or are the journeys going to reduce the attrition rate within your accounts? This isn't a magic piece here. This is a process that should be created and then perfected because it's going to have enormously wide reaching influence. Industry data tells us that the three biggest reasons for customer churn are bad onboarding, no ongoing customer success through that life cycle, let's say beyond onboarding, and bad support. So having a strong customer journey can help mitigate all three of these factors and allow customer success teams to proactively focus on other tasks such as expansion or early renewals. Having been a customer success manager myself for a number of years, I found myself really stuck in the day-to-day. -day. What was on my calendar for those external meetings? What was coming into my inbox for you know, emergency messaging? That's what I'd focus on. I'd get through that, but I'd have limited time for proactivity. I couldn't get ahead of my customer base and renew them easier. So a defined journey can really help keep, keep CSMs forward-looking and much less reactive. So how do you create a successful journey? Well, sometimes you'll see customers broken out by segment, right? We have enterprise clients, we have mid-market clients, we have tech touch clients. And some people think that, you know, we have too many customers for a journey to be successful or our customers are too unique and high touch to create something that's repeatable. But this is where achievements are gonna come into play. So this is where we're gonna rely on our customers to do what they need to do to consider success. Remember that a customer journey isn't just the CS team doing our job internally, it's the customers also doing theirs. So some of our clients with more of a tech touch approach have automated, uh, let's say, Churn Zero's journeys component to manage over 50,000 customers with a dozen CSMs. And how is it they do this? Well, they're utilizing a holistic approach to the customer journey. If your customers doing the right things, and if they aren't, we can use automation to push them to do the correct behaviors. And you can see a nice reduction in things like churn or reduced onboarding time by managing the customer lifecycle through a system like Churn Zero. So you want to create a framework for what you should be doing. And another good pointer or tip during a journey is to externally share that with your customers. For enterprise, high touch accounts, they'll use a similar framework even as a more automated approach, but potentially with additional tasks or achievements on the client side that are repeatable. But what they do is they help you identify any bottlenecks in your current processes. They also hold accountability for both sides. And you can do this by externally sharing a collaborative success plan. Customer retention, churn mitigation, these start at the beginning of a customer journey with your company during onboarding. The initial interactions between your customer, your product, and your customer success teams establish the groundwork to jumpstart success, or on the flip side of the coin, potentially accelerate failure. So setting timelines and tracking progress for important milestones establishes clear expectations for your internal and external processes and really can drive a successful onboarding. So as far as using something like onboarding with the example of milestones, here's a sample. You wanna make sure that you're staying on top of deadlines, customer touch points, and outreach opportunities with automated reminders for journeys, milestones, tasks, and achievements. This will help you guide customers with ease. You can automate customer facing journey status reports to, to keep those customers on target and on time with their uh, tasks and goals. So set up some milestones, and it's not just the internal tasks, it's the external achievements your customer must undertake as well. So second poll, final poll, if you will. If you have a defined customer journey and about 40% of you said you did, how are you currently managing them? Is it through a customer success platform? Do you find yourself in spreadsheets uh, or do you use a CRM? So we'll give it a moment here, to see how the poll is going through. So 
So this one's a little bit more interesting. It's, it's trending a little bit more evenly with about 60% or so, let's say, using a CRM. Uh, 40%, a little less than 40% using spreadsheets, and some teams are actually rolled out within a customer success platform. But I assume that a majority would be CRM, right? And so CRM is good, but it's primarily intended for sales team, right? It's a net new opportunity creation tool. It's a pipeline management tool. It's primarily for sales teams. And CS teams can hack, hack it through reporting, but lifecycle management and especially product usage is generally not reflected in, in a CRM. So oftentimes CS teams are handed these tools, they make do, but it's not CS centric. It's more just a reporting tool where you can get some maybe key metrics around utilization from the development team in a more manual setup. So again, the results are trending about 60% at this point, use CRM to manage their customer journeys. So what insights can you gain from a well-run customer journey? Well, you're gonna create a framework for what you should be doing. You can externally share this with your customers and uncover key metrics around timely onboarding or time to value with your clients. It's gonna also help you strengthen your customer health monitoring by connecting journeys to some of our most popular features, for example, such as playbooks, alerts, health scoring. Create a unified view of customer progress so you can quickly adapt to changes in the customer behavior and context. Use your customer journey data to sort of automatically add a customer to a segment for further analysis or to a playbook for targeted engagement and nurturing. You can get instantly alerted when a customer falls behind or reaches a major milestone. Build more dynamic customer health scores based on meaningful and weighted engagement. But again, specifically for something like onboarding, when you have customers going through a repeatable, scalable process, it'll really help you identify any bottlenecks that are in your current setup, tweak that a little bit, open up the flow. You can also help coach low-performing CSMs Let's get them on track with what another colleague is doing successfully. And again, tie those journeys success into the health scoring factors. So a few takeaways from what we've talked about today, have a clear and defined customer journey. A poor customer onboarding journey, for example, can derail the entire relationship. You wanna establish a journey for key phases of a customer life cycle. Remember, we're not just talking about onboarding here when we're talking about journeys. It can be for adoption, advocacy, a renewal journey. Have micro journeys in those phases of the life cycle as opposed to one complete one and milestones within each. And again, have a dedicated location where journeys are managed, not multiple tech stack pieces that your team has to go through multiple tabs, pull data sources from different locations, want to consolidate it into one view for them there. And I know we have a couple of questions. Uh, we'll get to those in a moment. Just finally, as we round out, if you'd like to get more opportunities to learn from your peers, be sure to check out our first customer conference, Big Rig. This is a free half-day virtual event coming up on October 8th. It's focused on what it takes to deliver customer excellence at all levels of your organization. You can see a full list of speakers, get registered, right at bigrig.com. Bigrig.com, October 8th. I hope we can see you all there. So let me take a question or two here. So how long does it take for a journey to get set up? Uh, it's a good question. And it should be fairly quick, actually. Uh, depending on what you want to establish, if you're focused on, say, an onboarding journey, for instance, you just want to make it simple to start. What are some key items that the customer should be doing? Are they at you know, 50% of their license utilization within the first couple of weeks? Are they using your stickiest features? These are things that you can easily monitor and track. And if they're making progress towards those, that could be a, a good benchmark for how they're coming along in the journey there. So here's the, another question sort of tied from John here. How many journeys should we have? So a good question again, and I would say it's sort of a crawl, walk, run approach, right? Again, you want to have a journey, let's say for onboarding from a sales handoff as you get going, and then maybe 
you have a midway through their life cycle journey for introducing new features to your product. Uh, certain things that need to happen during their life cycle to make sure they're successful. And then if you can have a journey around renewal, whether it's 60, 90, 120 days out, you want to have certain tasks and achievements, tasks for your team to undertake, achievements that your client is meeting as well. And you're going to see a lot more seamless life cycle present itself when you have a more defined customer journey from inception. So I want to thank everyone for coming on today. You don't forget the bigrig.com. If you have any specific questions you'd like to ask me directly, email's up there. Love to hear from you. Appreciate everybody's time, and we'll be sure to make this recording available for all attendees. Thanks again, everybody. Appreciate it.